what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film, Mad Detective. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a dimly lit room with an impressive array of knives. In the middle of it, a dead pig is hanging from the ceiling. Bun, a famous detective, stabs the pig corpse multiple times until the body falls down to the floor. He then uses a cleaver to hack its head away. Hob, a fellow detective, enters Bun's office just as he stabs the pig. He quickly introduces himself, but Bun is still concentrating on his exercise. He tells Hob to help him get inside his suitcase and roll it down the stairs with him inside. Bun is doing this to figure out to stab his student and stuffed her body inside his suitcase. With all this strength, Hob rolls the suitcase down a couple of flights of stairs. When he opens the suitcase, Bun emerges from a dizzy, but with a clear answer from killed the student. It is the ice cream shop owner. This is another impressive win for Detective Bun, who is renowned for his uncanny instincts and ability to solve murder cases. Later on, the chief of police retires, and the rest of the force throws a farewell party for him. Bun wordlessly steps forward and cuts his ear off with a knife. He presents the mutilated ear to the chief as a farewell gift, when the people around them stare in shock. This incident cements Bun as the mad detective of the Hong Kong police. One night, police partners, Wang and Shi, are on a stakeout. They are parked on a dark road, waiting for their suspect to come. While waiting, Wang loses his wallet and finds it tucked between the car seats. He rifles through it to check if his cash is still there, and discovers that there is some money missing. Wang accuses Chi of stealing the money, even going as far as to accuse him of being the one stealing things in the police station as well. Chi denies these allegations, and the two are about to argue when the Indian suspect arrives in a car. The partners try to apprehend him, but he runs into the forest, and they chase after the suspect. 18 months later, no one knows what really happened during that arrest. One had gone missing that night, and hadn't been seen since. Meanwhile, Bun was kicked out of the police force, for severing his ear off in front of the chief. People now think that he is mentally unstable. Bun now lives in seclusion. While Bun is in a convenience store with his wife, he notices two schoolgirls in front of the makeup counter. One girl is trying to convince the other to steal lipstick. One gets enraged and scares the two girls off. He storms out of the store, and his wife cautions him against acting erratically. Bun reasons that his ability allows him to see people's deep inside and who they really are. And he saw that the girl is spiteful and manipulative, so he took action. Bun and his wife arrive at their apartment and discover that Hop is waiting for them. He wants to consult with Bun regarding the case of Wang's disappearance. After he disappeared that night, his gun began to pop up as the weapon used in several armed robberies in the months after. Hob is now in charge of that case, but he has found no leads. He's hoping that Bun's special ability can help them hunt the perpetrator down. However, Bun's wife disapproves of him going back into police work. She throws a tantrum, and Bun reacts strongly by flipping the table in front of him. Hob is mystified by the scene, because he actually can't see the wife. Bun ushers him out the door, and he complies. Bun calms down and pleads with his wife. His wife reluctantly relents. Bun returns to the police station for the first time, since he was kicked out. He attends a team briefing led by Hob, who explains the different armed robberies that occurred. The first one was in a mahjong parlor, the second was in an armored car, and the third was in a convenience store. In all cases, a lone masked gunman uses Wang's police gun to do the robbery. A sales clerk was killed during the convenience store robbery, and guards were also killed during the armored car robbery. The police were able to trace the bullets back to the missing cop's gun. While the briefing is going on, Bun is continually distracted by the thoughts of Hobbs' team members. They have pleasant expressions on their faces, but Bun can see that the two of them are actually thinking mean things about Bun. They think of him as crazy and disapprove of Hobbs' decision to include him in the investigation. Finally, Bun couldn't take it anymore, and he punches the team members in the face. Hobb ends the briefing and clears the room out, leaving him and Bun. Bun then explains that he can see people's inner personalities and thoughts, which was why he punched the team members. Hob forgives him for his actions. The two then settle down to watch Chi's interview about the night his partner disappeared. He claimed that while in pursuit of the suspect, he and Wang got separated, and he never saw him again. Hob and Bun decide to follow Chi and see if he has anything to do with the robberies and his partner's disappearance. Bun watches Chi closely and realizes that he has seven personalities inside him. The personalities range from male to female, and they all dress differently. They also seem to be led by a businesswoman in a power suit. Bun and Hom follow Chi to a restaurant. While he's eating, Bun sees that a fat man is now his dominant personality. But when Hom approaches Chi and asks him about his partner's disappearance, the fat man personality starts to get nervous and sweaty. At this point, the businesswoman personality takes over and cruelly reiterates Chi's alibi for that night. He answers that he and Wang got separated that night, and Wang must have run into the suspect they were chasing, and the suspect killed him. 
He even adds that he has known one for a long time, and he would never hurt him. After Hob finishes his interrogation, Bun follows Chi into a restroom. He sees that the dominant personality now is the fat man again. Bun then pees on his leg, trying to provoke Chi into inadvertently revealing how his personality is coordinate. In a second, the fat man is replaced by the businesswoman again. She asks Bun what his problem is, and he slams Bun's head against the wall. Bun slumps on the floor, woozy from the blow to his head. Chi points a gun at him, and is about to press the trigger, when his five other personalities all work together to stop him. At that moment, Hob enters the restroom, and points a gun at Chi too, explaining that Bun is his partner. Chi lowers his gun, saying that he is so tired of being the prime suspect in Wang's disappearance. Before Chi walks out, Bun addresses the fat man personality, and asks why he can't press the trigger. The other personalities are alarmed, and exclaim that Bun can see them. But the businesswoman remains unperturbed, and says that's impossible. Hob bandages Bun's head injury, but Bun is just excited by his discovery. He explains that he has never before seen a man like him with so many personalities inside. He further surmises that the fat man is a glutton and a coward, and it's the businesswoman who's running things. Bun sees several armed guards, approaching an armored truck across the street. He takes this as an opportunity, to reenact the armored truck robbery done by the masked man. They then drive to the Majon parlor and convenience store to reenact the robberies once again. Bun gets the feeling that they are actually hunting for two perpetrators. One person robbed the armored truck and the convenience store, while another did the Majon parlor job. Bun says that the first person is a ruthless murderer, because of the casualties in the aftermath of the robberies. Meanwhile, the second person tries to avoid killing people, while doing the armed robberies. Hobbs not fully convinced yet of the soundness of Bun's theory, and he asks why an accomplished criminal would stoop low to rob a convenience store. Bun answers that it's because the perpetrator, Chi, has seven personalities. Right then, Hobbs' detective girlfriend calls in, and Bun suggests that they go out to dinner. It will bring his wife along too. Despite his wife being invisible, Bun acts as if she really is there. Hobbs' girlfriend is slightly uncomfortable with this. Bun sees Hobbs' shiny motorcycle parked outside the restaurant. He remarks that he used to have a motorcycle just like that. Hop offers to let him have a ride, but Bun's wife disapproves, since he hasn't ridden a motorcycle for a while. So Hob drives the motorcycle with Bun in the back instead. The girlfriend talks to the restaurant owner, because she notices that he knows Bun. The owner explains that Bun and his wife used to come there a lot, but one day, Bun started going alone, but he still acts like his wife is with him. After they're out of sight, Bun requests that they switch places. He drives the motorcycle like a madman, and when they arrive back at the restaurant and Hob disembarks, he grabs his wife, and they speed off together for a cruise. When they return once again, Bun shows Hobbs' girlfriend the way to the restroom. While they're gone, Hob talks to the invisible wife, and tells her that it's an honor to work with Bun. Bun returns holding a shrimp cocktail, and he hears his wife respond. She says that he has been a much happier man, ever since he started working with Ha. The next day, the two detectives go to the forest where Wang was last seen. Bun confesses that he gave the retired chief his ear as a respect, because he can see the chief had no inner personality. Right then, Bun gets the feeling that Wang is already dead, but in order to find the burial spot, Bun digs a grave and buries Hob in it at his suggestion. True enough, Bun sees a vision of Chi, looking for his gun several meters away. Actually, this is a splintered version of Chi, who has stayed behind and lost in the forest for 18 months. Bun takes off with Hob's car, gun, and police ID. Hob crawls from the shallow grave and discovers that Bun has left him. He angrily breaks into Bun's apartment to confront him, but he is not there. Inside, he finds signs of Bun's madness. There are newspaper clippings about female murders all over the walls, with weird symbols he had written on them. A woman appears. She looks like Bun's wife, but instead of being a meek homemaker, she is a stern police officer in a trench coat. She apprehends Hob, and he tries to explain that he works with Bun. It turns out his wife is not dead after all. She is a police officer in the same department, and she and Bun are divorced. She came to his apartment, because she learned that he hasn't been attending his psychiatric sessions. The wife claims that Bun doesn't have a special ability, he is just mentally ill. As she walks out of the door, she warns Hob to stay away from her ex-husband. Meanwhile, Bun goes back to the restaurant, where he first met Chi. He orders the same thing he did. He hears a commotion outside, and sees Indian immigrants fighting outside. This gives Bun an idea. He pretends to be Hob, and visits Chi's police station. He is not there. Bun asked if Chi worked on cases involving Indians, but the answer is no. He then asks if they regularly hold gun inspections for their officers, and a supervisor confesses that the policy is more relaxed for his team. Bun breaks into Chi's desk, and finds rolls of money inside. 
He also breaks into Chi's locker, and finds the Indian suspect's arrest picture inside. Bun goes back to the forest once again, and buries himself in a shallow grave. He gets a vision of Chi back on that fateful night. It turns out he had lost his gun, and stumbled into Wung. They fear that the Indian suspect had gotten the gun. Wung wanted to report to the station that Chi had lost his gun. But Chi got scared that this would go on his record. Right then, Chi's rageful man personality took over and killed Wung. He then saw the suspect carrying his gun, and the businesswoman personality took over and stopped Chi from shooting the suspect. Instead, he let the suspect run free with his gun. Bun's vision continues, and he sees that afterward, Chi had hacked into the police database and changed his firearm number into Wung's, so he could cover up his missing gun. But the Indian had the real gun of Wung and used it to commit the armed robberies. Somewhere along the way, Chi became the second mass robber too. Meanwhile, his various personalities take over at certain times, while he is staging a warehouse to look like the den of the Indian suspect. He put the mask used during the robberies, bloody money, and Indian magazines around the area. Finally, businesswoman takes over, and Chi calls the police to anonymously report that there's a suspicious Indian man in the area. Hob and his team take the bait. They arrive at the warehouse, and Hob finds one's police ID on the floor. They come to the conclusion that the Indian suspect is one of the two masked robbers, just like Bun theorized before. Hob sees a masked man staring at him through the warehouse window. He chases that man, but the man gets away from him. Bun emerges from the shallow grave and immediately heads back to the city to warn Hob about Chi's scheme. However, when he meets Hob again, he finally sees his inner personality as a young and scared boy. Hob is angry at Bun for deserting him. He doesn't really trust Bun anymore, especially after he has learned that he is mentally ill. Bun tries to explain that Chi is responsible for everything, and he is setting him and the Indian suspect up as the patsy for the armed robberies. But he doesn't believe Bun, and he tries to attack him. Bun's wife is also warning him inside his head that Hob doesn't trust him. Bun drives away, still holding on to Hob's gun and badge. But his wife is disappointed in him, and she jumps from the car. Meanwhile, Bun's real wife goes to the restaurant, and gives her card to the owner. In case he sees Bun, she asks him to call the number on the card. Bun arrives at the restaurant, searching for his wife. He sees his real wife sitting at a table, but he doesn't recognize her. He just sees her inner personality, which is a slightly older woman. His imaginary wife appears again, and tries to drag him away, but the real wife catches up. She tries to make him remember that she was his real wife, and that he came up with an imaginary version of her when she left him. Without saying anything else, Bun gives her the identity of the killer in the case she is working on. Hob's girlfriend comes to his apartment. He shares with her that Bun has his gun and badge. He wants to report the loss to the department, but his girlfriend convinces him not to, because it might ruin his record and impede promotion. He asks for her gun instead, so he can have protection while investigating the case. Hob comes to Chi's station and tries to arrest him for the murder of Wung. But when he checks Chi's firearm, it doesn't match the number of the missing gun. This is because Chi had already hacked the database earlier and changed the serial numbers again to reflect Bun's. Because of this, Hob starts to believe Chi more than Bun. Chi's phone rings, and he tells Hob that he just got a lead on the suspect. He invites Hob to arrest him together. They arrive at a secluded warehouse. Hob receives a text from Bun, who is also at the warehouse, warning him that Chi will kill him once he gets his gun back. The moment the elevator doors open, they see the Indian suspect, and they give chase. Bun calls Hob again, and explains that she killed his partner to cover up the fact that the Indian has Chi's gun. A shootout ensues between the three men, and the ricocheting bullets shatter the mirrors around the warehouse. In the glass shards, the several inner personalities of Chi are reflected, as the three detectives point their guns at each other. Chi shoots the Indian, and Hob shoots Bun. Chi then turns around and shoots Hob, but the bullet just grazes his shoulder. Bun musters the strength to shoot and kill Chi to protect Hob. As Bun slumps on the floor dying, he sees a confident female personality take over the scared young boy personality of Ha. She advises him to stage the crime scene, to make sure he comes out as the hero. Based on the advice, Hob calls his girlfriend, and gets her to promise him that she will lie and say that she was on the scene with him, and she was the one who shot her own gun. Hob then starts moving the guns from one dead person to the next. The movie ends with Hob getting one's gun from the Indian, and putting it in Bun's hand, framing Bun for the armed robberies and the murder. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.